Well, good evening. It's a late night. I hope all is well. I won't be that long, but um, welcome to a week in review of this week's political headlines, as usual. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do that. It's there. But these are these COVID numbers is crazy. Um, on this John Hopkins website, now global confirmed cases. We've got 154,773, 673. The global death toll is three... Million two hundred and thirty-seven thousand five hundred and eighty-nine. Then the U.S. confirmed cases we have thirty-two million five hundred and fifty-seven thousand two hundred and ninety-nine, and the U.S. death toll is five hundred and seventy-nine thousand two hundred and sixty-five. Even though the COVID infections have plateaued for seven months, for now seven months, but still we're still in the midst of a pandemic. So if you can get vaccinated, go get vaccinated. I got my first dose last week. Um, on the 29th of April and I'm due for my other one on May 27th of this month. So if you can get vaccinated, please do. You can get Pfizer or Johnson and Johnson. My clinic actually does it, which was a shock. And, um, if you want information, if you live in New York city, if you want the information, I can give it to you in a DM. It's no problem, but, um, please go get vaccinated. It's important. And speaking of more stuff, um, the job report, besides over 220 million people has been vaccinated, you have 267,000 jobs only been created in the month of April, which is not the best numbers, but it is something. Within the third month of the Biden and Harris administration, and it's probably due to they say it's due to the extended unemployment benefits let me just explain this as a person that's unemployed i've been seeking work since february because i worked temporarily from december to february to the middle of february and since then i have been looking for work and it's not easy and you just can't just get any job because now the cost of living is high and then if you have education, if you have a good background and have good education, you don't want a job that dumbs you down. You don't want that. It's just as plain and simple. I mean, I'm trying to make logical sense out of this stuff, but it seems like some analysts on TV and the commentary, it seems like it's, it's discouraging. It is. Hi, Sky. I'm so sorry. But back to my story. I have a nonprofit background. I'm a nonprofit administrator in development, programs, human resources, and accounting. Well, finance. And I want to, my next job, I want it to be where I can grow from middle, because now I can say I'm the middle position to a supervisory position. I don't want any jacked up ass position. I don't. I really don't. I want a good position. So me trying to get a job, minimum wage, and I live in the most expensive city in the country, you have lost your goddamn mind. And I'm not working below my privilege. So I will continue to apply for jobs and still earn my unemployment while still applying for jobs because an unemployment is not permanent. It's only temporary. And the unemployment offices want your ass to look for work. That's the whole goal of it. That's why they ask you to create a profile so they can send you jobs. So that statement that Stephanie Rule made today they didn't want to cut out the unemployment in already two states, Montana and South Carolina, cut out the unemployment. That is so dumb. Because now you got people that have to go back to these, go to these crappy jobs and they come from good wage jobs just to make ends meet. I swear this Republican fiscal conservative ideology that stemmed from Reagan is called for 
You need to work for the white man's low wage money that he is giving to you. Like you should be thankful for the money that he has gave you. Get the hell out of here. I don't got to thank y'all for shit. Sign the unapologetically black woman. Because I don't have to... Why would I have to apologize? And, 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 and I mean, why would I have to thank y'all for a job that I need to keep a roof over my head? Why? For what? I have no idea. But the president is very um, confident about... This American job plan, he just extended it to now $4 trillion to invest in blue-collar jobs and to invest in other small private sector jobs, including nonprofits, because nonprofit also ha kind of have suffered. Those um, admin jobs and nonprofit were cut, which I didn't know, which, like, going on interviews with nonprofits, you find that information out, which is like, oh, okay. So, yeah. So let's just see how the first year of the Biden administration plays out. Because it seems they're starting off on a good foot. So let this just continue. We just hope to get these laws passed, that the Senate actually do their goddamn job, and that Joe Manchin actually stays on course. Because as I said in my Twitter space conversation on Wednesday, it's not up to the president and the vice president. It's actually up to the Senate majority leader. And even though despite this tweeting bullcrap that he does and tried to get Joe Manchin on board, he's actually not doing a bad job. He just needs to do better. So that's my advice. So get that HR1 on the floor so you can keep these ashy high, high tops from talking because I'm sick of their asses too. But I t spoke about the jobs plan and the infrastructure bill that needs to come into play, too, because it seems the Republicans have a problem on the infrastructure bill. Like they don't represent poor areas in the United States of America. And some of these states, these senators, these Republican senators represent, they're like ranked like number 44 and 45 in like everything. Including roads. Bridges, education, technology. And the infrastructure bill, besides rebuilding roads and bridges and, and internet, it also is a job creator. Because all these people need jobs. If you want people to get off their ass, like get off their ass, you need to pass this. You need to get on board with the Democrats and pass this infrastructure bill. You should support it because your ass is needed. But come on with this shit. But yeah, um, they got a problem with this administration because this administration is being watched by everybody. And passing these bills are important. And some, in, and I'm going back to the ashy high, high tops, high tops, whatever they are, the ashy dirty people, the ones that call themselves doctor so and so. If y'all literally pay attention to what this administration does, and also read articles and go online and read the bills that they have on WhiteHouse.gov, you wouldn't have so much to say. But of course, you got these black mainstream folks. Who don't even care for the administration themselves. Giving them a platform to lie. I haven't heard anything from Dr. Johnson yet. Right? Nah. And when they pass this bill. I don't want to hear shit what Dr. Johnson has to say. And I'm not talking about Jason Johnson. Because Jason Johnson is actually a legit doctor. I am talking about Omar Dusty Ass Johnson. We shouldn't even be calling him doctor because there's no proof that he's a doctor. Until somebody show me the proof, I will call him Omar Johnson. That's right. That's his name. K. Yep. Hey, K. How you doing? Absolutely. But speaking of Addison Mitchell McConnell, 
He's also against everything that Joe Biden is for, and then he's walking the shit back. Yeah, you're walking the shit back because Connecticut ranks, I mean, not Connecticut, Kentucky ranks 44, like, almost in everything. Or 45, or even 50. You should be promoting this bill like a motherfucker in your, in your state. Because your state needs everything. So, you know, but Mitch McConnell, his days are numbered. And it's not being mean, but his days are numbered. Because also his wife may be investigated very soon. Because she was investigated before she fired her, eight, her IG. When she was still the Secretary of Transportation. So, yeah. Tough on them. But speaking of the GOP and disarray. So, you know, this week... Liz Cheney had the headache and almost damn near she's going to have the fight of her life. That's the face of like, I don't give a shit because Liz Cheney bought this on herself. Voting in lockstep with the former guy 93% of the time talking shit about the Democratic Party. Trying to throw your sister under the bus because of her sexuality. Just against everything that is beneficial to people of color and other marginalized groups. And now you got to fight for your seat because now you chose a time to speak up. Where was this energy four years ago during the Trump administration? Where was this energy when he attacked Mexicans, calling them rapists and drug dealers and uh, murderers. When, where was this energy when he said white supremacists will find people on both sides? Where was this energy when um, he called people that came from African nations and even from Haiti shithole countries? And it came from shithole countries. Where was this energy, you know, when he had kids in cages and still did and also dirty conditions in detention centers? Where was this energy when he withheld money from Ukraine that was allocated by the very same Congress that you serve in, uh, Liz Cheney? Where was that energy? Where was that energy when, you know, the um, first impeachment trial happened due to that money he withheld from Ukraine and you voted against it? And now that an insurrection was um, incited during, you know, the certification of the 2020 elections, you want to say this was wrong and you want to impeach him. But I believe he was about to overturn that election before you had a change of heart. So I don't understand media and white moderates. Why are we giving Liz Cheney a cookie for something that she was supposed to been have done her job to tell the truth? And then when you got white moderates on Twitter defending her, you need to side-eye them too. Well, she's the only thing that's saving the Republican Party. Why are we talking about saving the Republican Party? Because this is the very same party that watched us go through our stuff in 2016 when we lost that 2016, that very same 2016 election and praise the progressives disrupting the party and try to overthrow the party. Yeah. So why we should have sympathy for them? I don't know. But... <clears throat> They also, um, by Wednesday, they're going to vote Cheney out of her position, the Republicans in Congress. And they might put Stefanik in that position, which um, Stefanik um, only voted 78% with Donald Trump versus Liz Cheney, who, like I said, voted 93% of the time with him. So... Outside MAGA folks and including um some popular commentators are side eyeing Kevin McCarthy and Steve Scalise. But like I said, I am watching this played out, and if that happens, that happens. 
the Democrats got their shit together. Even with Chuck Schumer and his crap, they got their shit together. Their leadership is together. So Democrats right now are in a very good position. And they need to continue to carry out their agendas and do their job. And speaking of the Democrats, well, if you consider these folks Democrats. Oh, let me read some of your comments. I hear they don't really want her, so she's being used. Of course, she's too dumb to see it, so let that happen. Okay, I'm laughing because it's funny. Because I was just talking about that with my mom, and I was like, I'm laughing on the side i find it to be funny so why even give it why even have any sympathy of course she might lose a seat in new york state i'll see that happening i see that happening that's why you need a strong democrat in western new york to yeah But um, speaking of the Democrats in a uh, disarray, well, not Democrats in a disarray. Speaking of the Democratic Party, if you want to consider these knuckleheads as Democrats, the progressives are turning on Bernie Sanders. They're turning on their uh, progressive king. And I got to read this tweet. I know I read it yesterday, but it gives me so much joy just to read it again. Just because. So, here it is. I got to read Bernie's first. I'm just trying to find it. There we go. Here goes Senator Sanders. Representative Liz Cheney, Republican of Wyoming, will likely be voted off the Republican House Republican leadership. Her crime acknowledging the reality that Trump lost the election. The Republican Party is no longer a conservative party. It is an anti-democratic cult pushing a big lie and conspiracy theories. I mean, there is no lie in that tweet. <laughs> what is just shocking that Bernie Sanders is defending Elizabeth Cheney. So here goes the most nasty looking troll who looks like a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Nick is a Fred Hampton socialist, a.k.a. socialist MMA. You're really speaking up for a war. No, excuse me. I'm going to correct this one. You're really speaking up for warmonger Liz Cheney now. Jesus fucking Christ. The sad part about this is no matter how much of a team player Bernie is, the shit lives and the Democratic establishment will always hate him. So, first of all, um, Elizabeth Cheney is a hardcore, far-right, staunch conservative who voted with Donald Trump 93% of the time. She is not and nowhere a Democrat. See, people like Nick and the rest of the so-called progressives in the Democratic Party are so dumb. It is so sad. Like, I'm just like, they're turning on Bernie. They don't realize like Bernie has a better relationship with conservatives than moderates and the so-called progressives that um, he is aligned with. But like I said, a lot of his legislation enacted bills are not progressive. That's why like when he ran on this progressive uh, platform, it's like, you guys are being duped. Because 
who has an actual progressive legislative record enacted bills is Joseph Robinette Biden and Kamala Davy Harris and Amy Klobuchar and Dick Durbin and Sheldon Whitehouse and even Hillary Clinton. But real progressives don't put progressive in front of their whole entire platform. Because why? Because real progressives actually get shit done. See, these ones born in my era in the 1980s, and I am ashamed of them. Well, I'm a progressive. Well, what have you done? What have you advocated for? Who have you talked to? What boards have you sat on? How many board meetings you went to? How many community board meetings you went to? Have you volunteered anywhere? They don't have answers for those questions. Just because you uh, participated in a march doesn't make you a progressive. It doesn't make you progressive at all. So putting progressive in your bio and BLM in your bio and I'm for LGBTQ rights in your bio but haven't done shit besides marched in a protest you guys are performative ass motherfuckers and if you're offended by what I said you can either unfollow or mute me or block me because at this point, I can give two fucks in this lifetime. I am too old for the shit. And I'll leave it as that. Let me read some of your comments. Lauren Underwood. No, the real progressives are Democrats. That is true. Lauren Underwood just got part bipartisan legislative legislation passed. Absolutely. What the fuck has AOC done? nothing she's the least <laughs> effective congresswoman and people in her district in the bronx on the east very east side of the bronx which is lily white and um and the gentrified area queens are seen through that bullshit that's why someone was ready to vote for the republican candidate and if she's trying to primary charles schumer Good luck with that. Because all with Trump, I mean, Chuck Schumer's BS, Chuck Schumer actually delivers for the state of New York and he just delivered the American Rescue Plan. Him and the Democratic um, senators and the Senate. Yeah. You, you, you're going to have really tough... A tough battle with him. The only support she's going to get is gentrified support. Because old New York will come out for Chuck Schumer. And I'm old New York. Born, raised, still live here. Try it if you want to. But yeah. Some of these progressives, especially the white men... They're a joke. They're a whole entire joke. So I'll just leave it as that. And yeah, and and oh, old school Jew. Oh, forget it. And he's Jewish. You know the whole Jewish community is coming out for him. Yeah. O D. Hey Wolf. Yeah. They all coming out for him. And I know that. That's like with this whole male race. Because I'm about to talk about something else about that. But this whole male race. Half of these people not coming out for Andrew Yang. And I have a good feeling they might come out for Adams. And who might be in second place? It's possibly be Maya. But we're going to see how this whole debate. The debate is supposed to be on the 12th. 
I know I have files. I think it comes up on channel 24, but it's going to be on New York 1. So stay tuned. If you live in New York, you get to you watch. Because I feel like this whole mayor race became national. And I don't like the fact that certain people are talking about it, like Brianna Gray and them. They're talking about the mayor race. Like, I just want them, because Brianna Gray don't even live in New York no more. She lives in D.C. She needs to worry about D.C. politics. They all need to shut the fuck up. Because they like, it's like the, the white men. She had white people on that panel. Nobody black, hardly on that panel, talking about the candidates. That fraction of white people in New York only represent 20 or 30% of the population. They don't really represent the people in the city. So, I'm not understanding. I don't understand. But I just want them to shut the fuck up. But lastly... Because I have to address this. And, um, now I think it's May 12th or May 13th. Check. I think it's May 13th. I'm not quite as sure. But, um, I have to address this because it's been on my mind. And I'm just going to find this article. Because somebody needs to to attack this like ASAP. Wait, did she delete it? So, Abby Athy is a journalist at, well, she's a Washington editor at the, um, the Spectator USA. It's more of a Republican and far-right publication. She had the goal and audacity to talk about the vice president. I'm just going to read a quote off of it, but here it is. Harris fans are people who like to appear woke on issues of gender and race, but don't care or know much about policy so long as it is vaguely left-wing. So I'm going to read that again before I go in. Harris fans are people who like to appear woke on issues of gender and race, but don't care or know much about policy so long as it's vaguely left wing. And then on top of that, She had the goals to say this. When you write an article about the K-Hive and they immediately prove your point. Oops. Because in the midst of this, in the vein, in the vein, the K-Hive routinely accuse Harris detractors of being sexist racist or some combination thereof to them harris mere existence as a powerful liberal black woman is far more important than a specific ideology not that harris fans have won anyway the separates the k high from the similar zealous of bernie bros that was part of her article and then it's continued so to Miss Abby. 
because I've been dying to do this read all damn day. I was busy doing other things and watching my cousin's dissertation, not dissertation, her graduation in SOAR. So, Abby, since you want to write about the vice president and her supporters, which is the k -Hive, let me school you on the k -Hive real quick because since you know, you don't know shit. The k -Hive is not a group of bullies. It's not a funded nor coordinated group. It's a group of people who appreciate and respects and advocate for the vice president's initiatives, ideas, and thereof. And it is a diverse coalition. It's a diverse coalition of men and women who are black, brown, red, yellow, green, who are from different economic backgrounds, who are, uh, let's see, LGBTQ, straight, more. It's a diverse coalition. So the K-Hive is a coalition. And woke. See, I have a problem with you white women using the word woke. And if you don't know what it means. So when you use the word woke in your context in that sentence, it's more of a derogatory from you. Because I have a feeling that you, um, Abby or Amber, whatever your name is, you're not woke. So let me do this read again because I said her name wrong. So I'm going to school Miss Amber. Let me see if that's your correct name. Yeah, Amber, that's your name. So Amber, so I'm going to school you on the K-Hive. Because since you don't know shit, I might as well just give you this lesson. Because I did post a video, my past video, but I, I, I got to feature your name in it. So here we go. Amber. The K-Hive is a diverse coalition of people who support and appreciate the work of the vice president. Who also advocate all of her ideals and policies. The K-Hive is a diverse coalition of men, women of different um, diverse backgrounds. Black, brown, green, yellow, blue, straight, gay, different incomes, different ideologies from moderates, centrists, independents, progressives, and even some conservatives. It's called something of a, let's see, a coalition. When you build coalitions, you build coalitions of people who think differently, not people who think one way. And this whole thing of you using the word book. I don't like that shit. I don't like it in the context you use the word woke, Amber. Because from you, it, it, it seems racist. And do I think you're racist? I don't know you that well, but do I think you have racist um, intentions? Absolutely. So your whole article was bullshit. Your paper, The Spectator, is bullshit. You post many hit pieces on the vice president. So therefore, Amber, you could take your amateur reporting and um, go somewhere with that bullshit because nobody's not paying attention to you and you will fade in the dust and thin air, possibly. Dust or thin air. Either way, you're going to fade away very soon. Oh, Tinkerbell, I'm talking about Miss Amber, who decide who she wants to come for the supporters, the VP and the supporters. And more on Amber, because since Amber used the word woke, because that really offended me. I'm going to research the word woke. I'm going to give the definition. And then I'm going to read her some more. So, woke is an adjective. Alert to injustice in society, especially racism. 
the slang word for woke. In literal terms, being woke refers to being awake and not asleep. One Urban Dictionary contributor defines woke as being aware of the truth behind things the man doesn't want you to know. And when we say the man, we say the white man. Like people in Amber's family, her ancestors, who contribute to the systemic racism that is still going on today. So when Amber wants to um, call us woke in the most derogatory way, she needs to research the word woke before writing any article about any people of color. I'm assuming she's young and she has a child and that's fine. And I know you got to feed your family. That's great. But the fact that you chose violence to write an article on the vice president and her supporters, knowing good and damn well you never interviewed us, never even sought out an interview, you just based it on hit pieces after hit pieces, you're nothing but a bullshit ass amateur journalist, as I said from before. And as I said once again, you will disappear. Almost got tongue-tied because I want to say more. But I got to watch how I say more about people like you because you will do the I'm going to call your manager type of shit because you're a Karen. You will disappear in thin air because after today, you got your ass handed to you and rightfully so. And the more that you continue to write about the VP and criticize her, the more you will get your ass handed to so, Amber, I will think wisely before I put out a paper, an article on the vice president and her supporters. Okay? Hmm. But, yeah, she seemed very smug. And, yo, she also complained and had a Karen moment. And people still wasn't going for it. I said, you wrote an article... You know good and damn well people was going to come for you and you thought you was going unscathed. No, bitch. You wasn't going unscathed. People was coming for that ass. Hey, Ed. They were coming for your ass and they should. You lucky you wasn't called the B word. You lucky you wasn't called anything else. But you taking screenshots because you feel attacked. What the fuck you think it was? And it's not like you only attacked the VP. You dragged her supporters in there. And I believe one of my quotes was dragged in there too. You sue your ass, bitch. But you know what? Amber is going through some things. And after today, she's going to continue to go through some things. She may, um, like I said, disappear in the thin air. Just like Fox News. Just like all the other MAGA talking heads, they all going to disappear in thin air. It's just only a matter of time. And trust me, I read my daily devotions every day. And they gave me some good scriptures too. From the Old Testament. I read something from the Old Testament today. So I hope I read some of them Old Testament scriptures again because they're so good. Yeah. And you know what's so funny? We intellectually dragged her. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't smear her. We intellectually dragged her. Bernie bros, they will smear you. They're the vicious ones. I'm surprised nobody didn't write no hit articles about them. Because they probably scared the fuck out of everybody. And dragged them on their podcasts like somebody listening to that shit to this day. Nobody ain't listening to them. Nobody ain't listening to no Ryan 9. Nobody ain't listening to no Brianna Gray. Because they're struggling to keep their content. They, they're struggling to keep rent up. 
and keep a mortgage up. So they got to do these. They got to attack the Democratic Party. And it's not working anymore. Because once this American Jobs Plan passed and once this infrastructure bill passed and once H.R. 1 passed and the voting and uh, what is it? The Justice and Police Act. Once all that passed, nobody, they're going to disappear in thin air too. Nobody ain't thinking about them. Even Bernie canceled them. So what does that tell you? Yeah. But thank you for watching. I know it's a little lengthy. I really appreciate y'all. And, um, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Twitter or Instagram. But until then, you guys have a good night.